Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to be talking about Four Legs, which is a part of the current multiplayer map pool. It is also a very common tournament map and what I want to do is I want to talk about the different sieves that you can play here. I want to talk about the resource generation and I want to talk about the strategies that you're typically going to go for. So if you are new to this map or if you've played it before, this is going to be a good video if you want to just learn more about it. So let's get into it. Basically, Four Legs, let's start with the resource generation. We want to talk about how the map generates. So we're always going to find on each corner of the map, if you take a look at the map section here, each corner of the map is going to spawn with four deborder fish ponds. And this is a big deal because deborder fish is the fastest gathering food source for your civilization, no matter what civ you're playing. And so you always want to go for the water here. The food here in the deborder fish replenishes as well. And so what you want to do is you technically want to approach this map as in you want to deny the food from your opponent and you want to secure as much as possible. And so we have different timings we can work with. We're going to get into that later on. On the map, you have a standard generation, which is wood around your base. You have three small wood lines and then a greater one here. And sometimes that, those can be larger or those can be smaller. Uh, here's a greater one as well. We have our stone. We have our gold. And we can see that they spawn typically uh, the same way that it would on Dry Arabia in terms of the range. And then we've got the berries here. Right. You spawn with your five sheep, as you do in the current patch. And then you've got a deer camp very close to you as well. So we do have access to a lot of food. Should we not go for the docks? But you will always be going for the docks on this map. Uh, whether that's in early feudal or in the Dark Age. Typically it is in the Dark Age. We have five relics in total. They spawn pretty much just spread out like any other map, and two sacred sites. Whether you're playing Delhi or not Delhi, having two sacred sites matters a lot, because for Delhi, that means you're not going to get uh, as much gold as you possibly could have. But again, it's also a water map, so it is not the most important thing. Two sacred sites also means that it's easier to get a sacred site victory. If you are winning the mid game, then you can very quickly get these locked down and then shut the late game down before it goes too long and becomes a slugfest. And so the sacred sites here matter quite a lot as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, the strategies that you're going to be using. Typically, what you want to do is you want to open up with a duck on one of the ponds. And you're always going to be going for a pond that's close to you. So that can be the one in this corner or the one in the other corner. So the safe ponds. Now, they're only safe for as long as they're safe. At some point, people can do dock drops. They can go for aggression against your docks, or they can simply go for their own docks and try to outboom you on water. A lot of people in gold, platinum, diamond, even conqueror don't even know how to play water. So if you know how to play the early game here, that makes it a lot easier for you in general. I advise that you play a simple dock opener with not a lot of ships. You're not playing a full water map. You're playing a hybrid map. And so you want to get into the fuel age before five minutes, preferably earlier. Most people start aging up between 3 and 3.30 on this map, and they go for about 3 to 5 fishing boats. Some go for a little bit more. It depends on your sieve. So here we have a matchup that's Delhi versus French. And on this map, that can be a little bit odd. Why would you want to pick Delhi here? Well, Delhi is really, really good at going for early aggression. They're good at ramping up that aggression with their scholars, and then they're able to also defend their pawns with their fishing boats, which makes them a really good sieve for securing pawns without needing units. So you could go for something like fishing boats, and then you actually don't need to make attack ships to defend against dock drops. So if your opponent was building another dock here to try to get attack ships out on your dock, which is on your pond, which is quite normal, then you can actually, if you see it in time, use those fishing boats to deny that dock. Other sieves will have to have units there or attack ships to defend against those kinds of drops. So that's one thing to note when you're playing Delhi on this map. Then you only have two sites, and so you're going to get less gold if you get those secured, but it's also going to be easier for you to secure sacred sites, victory. And most importantly, well, you're going to have all that extra food, so you should be able to produce uh, as much as possible. One of the most common strats you're going to go for is just the full feudal aggression. You don't want to play the game too complicated on this map. You want to keep things simple. You want to go for the dog opener into aggression. Don't go dog opener into aggression and then try to find a castle age timing unless it's really needed. If you're in a situation where you can go for feudal age aggression and you can keep contesting pawns and you can keep building docks on your opponent's pawns or take out their docks in the first place, then that's a way better way to go about it because you're going to keep on adding to your advantage. 
you're not going to get as big of an advantage if you just go castle because your opponent can usually do the same thing if they have a dock. So try to keep things simple. Keep things centered around aggression. All right. This opener here for the Delhi is basically just mill opener to get the wheelbarrow. Then it's no mask because we get our first color from our dock. And so we're only really researching the um, wheelbarrow upgrade. Then we have the five on wood. We have four on food, including the one here on the dock. Yes, you can have a villager just drop off at the dock. And then we're going to get the fishing boats as we get the wood for it. Here, we're going to go for a mining camp with two villagers on gold. And so we're going to get up as quickly as possible post dock opener. So we're going to speed this up a little bit. And some of you might ask, when should you go for the second dock? Or sorry, the second pond. And the second dock can be aggressive. It can, for example, be on your opponent's pond over here. But a second dock defensively is actually not a move you necessarily want to go for at all times, unless you're in a really good position in the first place. So it's a good way to expand upon an already good situation where you have um, map control, then you can go for the second pond. But if you're in a situation where your opponent's going aggression, they have one pond, you have one pond, try to contest their pond um, before you start to add on to another one, because you're going to be spending a lot of resources on fishing boats and potentially defensive units to protect those ponds. It's easier to dock drop on one of two ponds than it is to drop dock drop for your opponent on one pond out of one ponds. So that's the way you want to think about it. It's a good way to snowball. It's a little bit of a risky way to play it out if you are not in a position to actually do so. All right. So we're going to age up here. And then, as I said, we're going to play things simple. We're going to play for a barrack opener because we're up against French. And then we're just going to go aggression. Our split is very 50-50. Remember that we've got five fishing boats here. And so they're all going to give us a lot of food. This is deep water fish. It gives a lot of food in general. Always try to get this deep water fish. We get the stable after. So we're able to produce these very food heavy units. We wall off early because we don't want to deal with knights. And then what we're going to do is we're simply just going to go aggression. There's a gold here that's pretty exposed. We've got the wood line here. We're not going to dive the wood line too early. We're just simply going to try to go out on the map, try to get things done. We have our Domo of the Faith, so we can get Sanctity, and so we're able to take these sites quite early. At seven minutes, we get our Blacksmith. Again, prioritize getting units out. You want to get more units out before you get your Blacksmith on a map like this, because you want to maintain early control. These spears here, Bait of the Night, with the Scout movement, and so already now we have a really good early advantage where we can push our opponent off gold. So you can definitely do a lot on this map if you get a good enough time to go into the Feudal Age and then start producing immediately. Definitely try to go for that aggression, as I've said a few times already. Again, keep things simple. Don't try to kill five villagers here early on if you're not in a position to do so. Again, just try to play for map control. If you're in a good position, you can go for the second dock. You can even go for something like a dock drop here. Mine was denied because of the knights. And then again, you could say, okay, well, you should send another villager. Yeah, I decide to actually go for another dock up here, but it so uh, turns out that he's also here and my units were a little bit out of position. So what do I do here? Well, I'm still going to try to go for that dock up here, but I'm also going to try to see if I can do some damage to um, his base still. So we forced a tower, and so his dock here is safe. We don't know if he's up here. We can quickly take a look through this. We can see that he did actually go for another dock. But most importantly for us currently is that we get the walls secured on the sacred sites and get those advantages snowballing. You might say, okay, when do you make the decision to go full feudal? When do you make the decision to go castle age? I would say if you're up against the defensive opponents, such as against English, you can go castle age if they're going for castle age themselves. Um, because it can be very difficult to dive an opponent that has a lot of defensive advantages. So if you're up against Chinese, if you're up against... Um, something like English, uh, then you will find that it's probably a better choice sometimes. And other times, it's better to simply just keep playing the Feudal Age game. Here, we can definitely not go Feudal Age yet. We have a good advantage. We have a military superiority. If we head into the Castor mode, we can see that we are ahead in uh, military. And so that is definitely something to keep in mind. We keep on making fishing boats as well. Take a look at our opponent's fishing boats. He has about 13 here and another one here. And we have about 11. So it's it's not equal, but it's very close. We're also able to outproduce him here. So that's really good when it comes to positioning. Got the Sacred Side timer rolling. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to keep on making units. And that's the gist of it. Keep on making units. Keep pushing. Keep trying to take good fights. I'm going to just 8 exit here. So you guys can see what it basically uh, turns out to be. We're just going Spear, Horseman, 
hardly any archer rangers. We have two barracks, two, uh, three stables, and two blacksmiths. We added the second blacksmith because we needed to get those upgrades a little bit quicker, provided we were playing water, we get the blacksmith out later because we are up to fuel age later as well. And then we're just playing really, really aggressive here. So we take out most of the knights and our opponents is left with primarily archers, which is absolutely fine. We go back a little bit because we're not playing it too risky. We can just keep snowballing from here. We've got the second duck. And um, yeah, now we're just going to keep on making units. So again, keep things simple. Don't try to do something genius. Just do aggression and you should be absolutely fine playing on four legs. Something you can also try to do is try to get an advantage with a Civ bonus like the Shinobi. They're a really, really strong unit for the Japanese civilization, and you can use those to really just get that early advantage, that early tempo advantage from having free units, and then use that to get to Castle very quickly and get your Civ bonus into play. So that could be something like Yurishiro from the Floating Gate. So what you want to do is you want to take a Civ that's really good on water, like the Abbasid, like the Japanese, and then you're going to play for those hybrid advantages that you have with Shinobi. Here, we're doing a very simple uh, Feudal Age opener. Again, it's the same as before. Five on wood, we go up to four on food, then we rally, two on gold, and then we go back on food afterwards with our TC rally point. We are just going to be producing fishing boats. Japanese is a really, really good water sieve because Japanese has reduction on the boat cost like the English does as well. And so it's a really good way to get a lot of fishing boats out early and it can give you a really good food advantage to go for a quick castle age or a lot of units in the feudal age. I don't advise with Japanese that you play out long feudal. You actually just want to get up to castle age as quick as possible. A lot of sieves will have a lo longer setup time playing on a water map. You don't because you don't need the units. You have the Shinobi, and those units are really, really strong because the Shinobi will be basically doing what you need to do in terms of applying pressure early and uh, giving you the time you need to go Castle Age. Here, we went for the Tier 1 Wheelbarrow. So we send another one here to Gold. If you didn't go for the Tier 1, you can just go with 2 and Gold. And then we're just going to be rallying food for the rest of it. Again, remember that you have a lot of boats as well, so sometimes when you want to get those fast timings, try to get that drop-off uh, right when it comes to uh, going Feudal Age. So here, we start aging up. We're aging up with seven bills on the Koka Township. You want to age up quickly. You want to get these out quickly as well, because you want to apply pressure before your opponent's actually up and running. They have a longer setup time, especially the Byzantines. And so we're just playing it out simply by having Shinobi, by going for an outpost. And then we already now know that we can just go for a fast castle. So we actually don't stick more than, I think, four or three villages here in wood. And then we do a pretty simple split between the villages up here. So we have about 14 on food, 15 on food. That's including the fishing boats. And then we have nine on gold. Again, you just want to wing this. There's not really a build order to this. This is adaptation in a nutshell. And so, again, practice just getting those splits correct. If you want to go castle, 2 to 1 split or 3 to 1 split is usually just fine. Here we can see the Shinobi come into play. Really good to uh, go and deny something like docks, for example, so they can't produce. It's also really good if you want to apply pressure to something like a wood line here. Here we can see our opponents relying on a mercenary house and a tower, so there won't be a lot of units here early on. For us to worry about. That means that we can very comfortably go next age. So we're almost there actually. We're six, uh, 30, 6 minutes and 30 seconds into this game. And we are actually able to age up at 7 minutes if I remember correctly. So a lot of idle time has been caused here. Remember these are free. The first one is free. The two other ones are not. So we did produce two more shinobi. I think this is a really good move if you want to apply a lot of pressure early. Um, and it doesn't delay you too much. We're still able to get that 7 minute age up. We're aging up with about 11 here. I think I pull a few away just because I want to get a bit more wood. Um, and then we've got stable coming as well. So a really good amount of pressure gives us just enough time so we can go and actually do something um, in the Castle Age without having too many enemy units uh, in play. So let's say we had kept going until 9 minutes and we'd waited 2 more minutes to age up. Well, that would have meant that our opponent would maybe have had twice as many units for us to deal with. And that's a lot harder when you're running cavalry. You don't want to have that many units to deal with in the first place. So, cavalry. Get that Yudashira inside of the stable. And then start taking relics. This is a typical fast castle build order for the Japanese. You just simply want to try to get a good amount of fishing boats. Here we have seven. We have our stable. And we have a pretty 
decent split with 21 on food, 5 on gold. We're going to... Actually, actually, 9 on... 10 on gold. There we go. And then we're going to take our relics. Here, we're going to face an opponent that's going to go very aggressive. And we can see that they've gone for mercenary house and a barracks. And it's going to be longbows and spearmen. So what we want to do is we don't want to use, lose our first units here. We really need to get a mass up and running. With something like a longbow spearman mass like this can be very scary. We want to prioritize getting an archer range because archers counter both of those units. So try to think about that when you pick your compositions for the early part of Castle Age. You could also go samurai here. But the problem with playing samurai is that they're slow. And so you want to actually want to go for the Yumi instead. Because upgraded, they do a lot of damage to feudal age units. So now we've got the... Um, Usher range, we've got the Shinto Shrine, and we're able to deposit our relics. We're also able to find a few villager kills this way. And so now we see that he's actually moving to play more aggressively. So what do you do in this situation? Well, I was initially going to go for a second TC. You don't need to go second TC in this map. That's the brutal truth of playing hybrid maps. It's sometimes hard to really know, can you go for more expansions? Is that what you want to play? Or do you want to close this game out quickly? Here... I basically know that this guy is pretty all in. He's gone for 18 spears. He's gone for 10 longbows. He's also got an attack ship over here on the dock. We saw that before. And now I'm in a position where if I go second TC, I won't have enough units to defend. So what I want to do is I just want to say, okay, look, I defend this. And if I defend it, hey, then I probably won the game. So that's the only goal in this position. Don't try to play the long game because you're going to be playing a short game if he decides what's going to happen. And he will decide what's going to happen if you are um, playing for a second TC. So, archers, mount of samurai, a little bit of micro here. We try not to uh, lose our mount of samurai to the uh, spearmen themselves. We're able to pick off a few longbows and just sort of bait the spearmen away with these early mount of samurai here. You can often get some good pokes in if you take their um, new units out. Here he's going for full spears, so we just need a lot of archers. We're going for a second archer range. We're going to get the Yudishiro out of the floating gate, the third Yudishiro. And then we're just going to make as many archers as we can. Doesn't mean we stop making Mount of Samurai. It just means we want to play um, more aggressively here with archers instead. We get our Bannerman for archers to get that extra damage. And then we just start taking them out. They do a good damage, a good, good amount of damage. So even if there's a lot of spears like this, again, you will have a lot of damage coming out of these archers. Mount of Samurai are also a castellation unit. They're quite strong. They've got that extra um, deflective armor. So you can also use that. Um, the biggest threat here is probably the spears. But the longbows are also very good at killing your Yumi. So you don't want to lose all your Yumi too quickly. So we take out the longbows. Then we take out the spears after. And this ends up becoming a pretty good fight. And the game is pretty much over here. So this is one of those situations where you are playing a bit more risky. You're going for a castellage. You just want to defend it. And then you're going to be absolutely fine. All right. So the final matchup I want to be talking about is going to be uh, Abbasid versus English here. English is a decent pick as well on four legs. But we're going to be taking a look at Abbasid here. Because Abbasid does something that only Abbasid and Ayubids really do. Which is dock dropping on this map. So something you can do that is really effective on most hybrid maps is dock drops with Abbasid because you have those military wing units and you can get a stable out quickly but you can also decide to go for an early ram or an early dock on the enemy's pond to try to contest their water. A lot of the times when people have gone for a water opener the water will be slowing them down initially and then it'll pay off later. And so if you can hit them in that time where they're still waiting for the payoff you can actually very quickly get into position where you feel very, very good econom economically and uh, militaristically. So here what we're doing is we're basically just doing a 6-2 opener. We've got 6 on food. The food villagers are building a house and a house of wisdom. We send 2 on gold to build a mining camp and to gather gold. And then we're just going to go up. We're not even going to go for a dock opener here. Because what we're trying to do is to establish early control, get our opponent to do the things that we want them to do. For example, opening military wing will force something like council hall. If we go into a stable after that, we can force a barrack. And so we can really dictate what we want this game to go, uh, how we want this game to go like. And here, we see our opponent's gone for a dock opener. He's got about two ships here and a villager. And then we're just going to age up. So we know that we can go for a ram if we feel like it. If our opponent's gone for a council hall, that means that that ram will be able to take that longbow fire. But we can also decide to go for a stable and to contest those longbows to keep them in the enemy's base for longer and simply just try to get control of the enemy's 
uh, composition by simply having better mobility and counter units. We're going to go for a dock once we get to the feudal age here. We are about to get there. So we drop the dock on this pond and we start making fishing boats. What we're trying to do here is we're just simply trying to exploit the fact that we get free units from the military wing once we age up. And so that's why we want to prioritize getting that as quick as possible. Military wing units move out. We start making fishing boats. We get a stable. And we've got the house to keep on producing. And then we're just going to try to pressure. We see our opponents going for a council hall. He's aging up at a normal pace. And so if we go for a ram here, it can be a little bit risky. Because we might lose out on a few units. What we're going to try to do is we're just going to pressure the wood line here. Pressure the wood line here. Try to cut their um, longbow production as much as possible. And then we're going to have our own horsemen. Here, you can also go for a dock drop. So let's say you didn't want to go for the uh, safe water here. You could simply just go put the dock here. And then you can start making attack ships against the greedy opponent that goes for a lot of fishing boats. If not, then you can also just decide to play it out uh, the way that this is going currently, which is a little bit more safe, which is a safe dock put later on a dock over here. And if you get a good control with the early horsemen, you can even go for a dock drop on your opponent. So this is a little bit different from Nagari that relies 100% on an early uh, military advantage on Navy. Here we are sort of making decisions based off, okay, what are they approaching the early feudal age? Um, do we want to risk going for a dock drop or can we actually still benefit from just doing our own water? And then you might say, well, we should just have done water from the beginning. And I would say no, because the early military wing units are still that good. You want to get them out because they are able to put your opponent in a very defensive position where you decide what's going to happen. So that's quite important. Keep that in mind. Here we forced an attack ship. We forced a lot of longbows. And so now what we can do is we can start to run around their base. We can do a little cheeky job, dock drop here on the um, left side. And that's on his main pond, by the way. And then we can start to do attack ships. We go for a sprinkle ship. Then we go into a uh, archer ship. And then we're pre pretty much just going to take control of the water here. So there you're going to have a little bit of fish gameplay. Or should I say naval uh, gameplay. And that's that's what it is. Again, it's not that easy to play hybrid because you have to switch between those two modes. Which is land and water. We're also getting us our upgrades. We've got the wood upgrade. We're going to get a wheelbarrow a little bit later. We've got our stable. So what we're doing is we're just going to go and hit the wood line here as we're also attacking here. So if you're playing against an opponent that's a little bit slower, you can easily get some few a few villager kills here by simply timing your attacks to your navy. So attack with your naval, try to get their attention over here. Don't make mistakes where you lose out on your ships because you don't see a demo or you lose your attack ships to some hulk or something. Simply just attack on the water, try to keep your focus, and then attack on their wood line right after. Because then they're going to be focused on this and they might miss an opportunity um, to potentially defend. Um, or maybe they don't even see it at all, right? And so you're going to have a better time that way. Here we take out his main army. And I would say that even though I lose most of my units, I'm in a better position. Because what's happening right now is I've got this pond over here with two fishing boats. I've got this pond here with eight fishing boats. I've got this one here with attack ships. And he's got three fishing boats left so we're even on military right we've got take a look 16 17 military some of that is fish, uh, attack ships so three horsemen one archer one camel archer we're just starting to add in more archer rangers more stables we're starting to get our upgrades we're pushed off gold and i don't even think i lose a villager here and now we're simply able to get a lot more going for us because we're so far ahead you look at the f income in food he has 350 right now. He was down to 250 before. We have 800 food per minute. We have 800 wood per minute. We also had gold per minute, but that was just pushed off. We just push off out to the other gold mine here. So you can see our income is so much larger. This means that the longer that this goes, the better. It simply gets better and better. Uh, the more you play this out, the more you play this in a methodical, controlled way where you are able to just take more and more water because it gives you that food and it allows you to put your villages on other resources. Instead of gathering from berries and sheep, you can now gather from wood, gold, stone, and whatnot. So that's simply what you want to do. Here, we're playing versus English. English sort of has a really good ramp up. So in the late feudal age, they're really strong because they get a lot of mana arms, and we kind of want to avoid that. So 
we don't want to go to Castle H too quickly because it can potentially uh, ruin our timing where we have a lot of food coming in. We want to use that food to be aggressive. We want to use that food to dictate what our opponent's doing. And here we know that he's moving around in the middle area. So what we're doing is we're actually just pushing into the wood line so that he doesn't push us currently. So if we try to push him a bit here, this is going to force his units to go back. And every time he's trying to go out with an infantry mass, we can take our cavalry mass that has a higher mobility. And then we can use that to take his units back to his base into a defensive position. And then at the same time, we can go castle. Get that castle age. Get a lot of archers. Archers are phenomenal against feudal age units, especially when they're fully upgraded with the plus two ranged armor, with the variancy. And so what you can do with that is simply just go castle age, upgrade, and then you can take a fight against whatever feudal age opponent you've got. Um, so that's really good. We've clicked up now. We're about 16 minutes into this game. We've got full water control. We're trying to get the top pond as well. We're going to go in from the back line. This is a clever move. This is a move you see a lot of pros do, which is they take their cavalry mass or another unit mass, and then they attack the enemy opponent while they're aging up. And so your opponent is going to be guaranteed to be in a defensive position in their base. And so you know that you have extra time to get your upgrades, to get your units out. So that's a really smart way of going about it. Your opponent's moved into a nice position where he would be able to cut us off. We just run through his base because we know his villages are not there. And we want to use our horsemen once we get to Castle Age. Archers getting upgrades the moment we click up. Get the veterancy. We get the plus two range attack. And then we're going to take a fight whenever possible. We also make a mangonel here. You can still make mangonels against longbow masters. That's very effective as well. And then we just start attacking. Our upgrades come through here. And now we have plus two range attack. Veteran archers are going to get their composite bow soon. And they're going to melt whatever it is that he throws at us. Because... There's not really many units that can stand against um, archers that are upgraded when their opponent is in fuel age. So we've got the water in the top side being contested. We're pushing in the middle base here. And um, yeah, what can I say? It's a timing, like any other timing, where you're just able to do the damage you need to do, build up the advances you need to do economically, and then you will get that timing going where you have both a military economy economy and a tech advantage. I hope this video was useful for you. If you have any questions about playing four legs, then ask them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. All right, have a good one.